everyone, I'm Lachey Hall and I'll be giving you a live tour of Holcomb Hall today. Behind the camera we have... Hi guys, I'm Emily. I'm a marketing intern for housing. And please go ahead and tell us where you're, where you're tuning in from. You want to show us the different places around? Sure. Okay, so I think that Holcomb is in one of the greatest spots on campus. Across the street, we have the Pat Walker Health Center, where you guys can go ahead and get any health checkups, any like diet advice, things like that. Um, we also are pretty close to the Walmart on campus, which is where you can go ahead and make any smaller purchases that you don't want to have to drive all the way to like the neighborhood market or Walmart on MLK. Walmart on campus has a lot of variety and a lot of options that people don't necessarily think a campus Walmart would have, but you can basically find anything you need in there. Um, we're also pretty close to the bookstore. It's right across the street for, you know, buying textbooks, um, school supplies, things like that. And we're pretty close to the Union, which has, you know, the best food court, um, apart from, you know, our dining halls, which we are also close to. <laughs> We're across the street from Fulbright Dining Hall, which is my favorite place to eat, but I may just be biased. Um, so, do you guys want to come on in? You fobbed in right there, it looks like. Yes, uh, Holcomb Hall, like many of the dorms, are very secure. Um, during day hours, office hours, when the desk is staffed, the front doors are open. But right now, because there is no official university representative at the front door, it's locked and only students or employees with access can enter. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Um, my name is Natalia. I am the CRE for Holcomb and Future Halls. So if you're going to be living in Holcomb next year and you didn't know, we do a lot of stuff with the two buildings together. So you'll hear two halls, one community pretty frequently. That's something that we really look, pride ourselves on and having y'all comfortable in both spaces. So we'll talk more about what that looks like a little bit later. Um, but this is my office. So if you ever see the door open and I'm in here, please feel free to stop by. I don't want you to don't be scared of me. I'm not scary, I promise. Like, if you ever have any questions or you need anything, definitely feel free to stop by. Your Aries are here too, um, for you to ask them any questions as well. And then this is Shamsa. Hi y'all, my name is Shamsa. I'm the GA for Holcomb International Student Experience. If you're an international student, feel free to come to me. I have a lot of experience in that. <laughs> and my office is right there. If it's open, I'm always there. Come to me with all your concerns. Beautiful. So we are just going to walk through the building. Do you all have your keys? Because I don't have mine. I do. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to head over this way. Um, something that's pretty nice is on the entire first floor of Holcomb, there are actually no residents that live on this floor. And so there's just a lot of common areas and spaces for you to hang out, do whatever you want to do, which is pretty nice. That was an exaggeration. Don't do whatever. <laughs> there are some limitations to that. Um, study. <laughs> right. For example, here, this is a study area. So during the year, um, we like to keep this kind of as a 24-hour quiet space um, for residents to use. As you can see, there are two rooms within here that you can close off. So. Let's say maybe you have an interview coming up or you have like a group project that you need to work on. Feel free to go in to one of those rooms and shut the door. Um, if the door's shut, people know not to go inside because there's somebody in there, which is nice. But there's a bunch of different um, seating areas and things like that in here that you can use to do any setting that you've got, which is pretty nice. Shay, do you ever spend any time in here? I have actually. Uh, my greatest memory in here, I think, there was a student that was doing, that had an international class and they were doing like surveys for the international students. 
And you know, Holcomb is normally like 40 to 60% international students. So I remember they had us all, like they had asked us if we wanted to be a part of this survey. And they have us all like come into the room and they would have us fill out and ask questions. It was a really cool experience. So I like to study rooms personally. I like to study alone. So I like the individual rooms where I could just shut the world out and try to like focus. But I also liked like the group dynamic. We also used this for a lot of like game nights and just like hanging out and eating junk food, stuff like that. Yeah, it's nice because I don't know, I feel like in some halls, spaces like this aren't used very frequently, but you're always going to find people in this space, which mm -hmm. is super nice. And that goes to say for just about every common area. <laughs> There's always someone. Yep. I think you got a, a shout out, Lachey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gisha Miller oh, my mom. says, hey, Lachey. <laughs> and then earlier, someone said, that's my niece. Aww. <laughs> so cute. We love that's the great. support. We love the family support. Um, so we're going to head back towards the lobby over here. Um, something to know is that the front door of Holcomb, and sorry if this was already said, um, the front door of Holcomb is unlocked every uh, um, day during the week, 8 to 5, because we have the ISS office here, and we'll talk more about them in a little bit, um, which is why these areas off of the lobby you need to key into. Um, so definitely make sure that you don't forget your keys yep. or at the very least, don't forget your fob because if you get <laughs> out here, you're not getting anywhere else. Um, but moving on. So this is a small little kitchenette um, that is here for y'all to use if you need it. As you can see, it doesn't have a stove or anything, but there is a microwave and a fridge for you to use. Um, keep in mind, we also share this space with the ISS office. So sometimes you might... Um, see that the fridge is pretty full mm -hmm. usually it'll only be full for like Couple a day days. or two yeah. yeah because they're gonna be using it soon <laughs> um but this is a nice convenient space as well for you to use yep and Holcomb has like it's I think Holcomb holds about 140 students so it may seem like there's not enough space but the way that I remember us like packaging and labeling this was mine like this is mine you can store your food if you want to like have something in the fridge, like milk for your cereal. I know I surely always had milk in one of these fridges because cereal is my life. <laughs> so just don't be afraid. I know some people are afraid to like store their stuff where like anybody in Holcomb could have access to it, but I never really had an issue with like people eating my food or anything like that. So it's pretty safe. Yeah, and this is my third year um, in this community and same thing. I mean, we've never had an issue of people stealing food or anything like that, so. Wouldn't be too worried, but also if you don't want your stuff around other people's stuff, keep it in your room. Yep, totally get it. <laughs> keep it in your room. You can get um, a micro fridge to keep in your room, which is nice too. Someone asked um, about when we were going to do the Maple Hill tour, and guess what? Maple Hill jumped on in their Instagram account <laughs> and answered the question. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Um, they also right. said, Talia, you're doing amazing, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who said that, but I appreciate you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> So this is honestly one of my favorite spaces. I'm probably going to say that for every space we go into in this building. <laughs> um, but this is one of my favorite spaces in Holcomb because we have a beautiful piano that residents use honestly all the time. Mm -hmm. And for reference, my office is just right across the hallway over there where you met me. So, so I get to hear it. And the good and the bad. Well, honestly, I feel like if somebody's playing the piano here, it's a very public space, so usually they're quite talented. Because <laughs> if somebody isn't, they get a little nervous, which honestly, full send. Use it no matter what your skill level is. Um, moving over here, though, this is what we call the Holcomb living room. Mm -hmm. um, something in both Holcomb and Futural that we try to really embody as um, housing staff members is that this is your home. I mean, you know, you might only be living here for a year. You might recontract and come back again later, but regardless of how long you're here for the time that you're living here this is your home away from home and we really want it to feel like that so mm -hmm. calling this a living room makes it a little bit more personable makes it a little bit more welcoming yeah. um, and with this being um more like 40 to 60 percent international students this is all also the room that we hold the global series which is like we do events on certain nights where a specific country and like the students here that represent that country get to like give a presentation about their country. They talk about foods, dancing, like the culture. 
and we normally like move the furniture and we set chairs out and you just get to come watch enjoy and learn about the cultures that are around here and, and you're an international student too is that yes, right yes i am from the bahamas shout out to 242 <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do any uh, presentation on the Bahamas? Yes, the Bahamas did have a presentation that I was a part of. We made them some good food. We talked about like the fly colors and things like that. I think I also went to two other series. Um, there was a series for Grenada, and my roommate was Panamanian, so I helped her with her series when they did one on Panama. So nice, that was nice. nice. Yeah. A lot of good food in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that, always food. Oh, my gosh. It is so nice, especially when we get to showing you all the kitchen downstairs. There's always people cooking. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, they'll ask you if you want to try it. Nine it times is out of ten, I will say yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's great. I think the only thing that I would add about Global Series, um, we met Shemsa earlier, and she's going to be the one that is in charge of all of the Global mm -hmm. Series events, and so she will be your go-to person for that. And also, if you are a domestic student that has studied abroad, you're welcome to present for Global Series as well. Um, really, anybody who has that international experience, we want to get more involved in, um, in our community with, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, this entire space will look completely different whenever yeah, we have Global like Series. Themed events here. Mm -hmm. um, I know Holcomb and Future, the RAs normally plan events um, based on any themes that they picked. I might went to one about self-care where they just had us like, um, cause the floors are gendered. So I know the girls floors from Holcomb and Future came together here. And we just talked about like, what made us feel like, you know, beautiful. And then we did like spa treatments. We did each other's like fingernails, toenails. It was cute. Yeah, <laughs> there's, we, have, we do a wide variety of things. We've done stuff like that. We've had uh, mini golf in the hallways that we set up with various like stations and stuff. <laughs> Um, I'm willing to bet there are some people in housing that are cringing at that. <laughs> They're tiny kids golf clubs, not real. They're all, it's all plastic, don't panic. Um, so over here, we are moving towards our front desk. If you look over this way, that is where the front door is, just to keep you all oriented. You can see my office at the end. Um, our front desk is not staffed 24 seven. And so we have something called a zoned desk, which means that during business hours, so eight to four, 30, mm -hmm. is um, if you need mail, so let's say packages, or if you lock yourself out and you need to get a loaner key, you're actually gonna go across the street to Northwest Quad over in Morgan Hall. That's where you're gonna pick up your mail, that's where you're gonna get your keys and all of that stuff. Um, there will be somebody at this desk starting at 4 p.m. on hours vary, depending on what day of the week it is. We'll have a sign up so you can see that. Um, but we'll have Aris here, so if you have any questions or you know, just wanna stop by and chat, like, please do so. Um, but you'll see during the day, like right now, <laughs> no, there's nobody yeah. here. <laughs> I will also say, um, personally for me, I was someone who always have a, had a habit of locking myself out my room when it was time to like go to the community bathroom. So you can also just call your floor RA. Each floor has two RAs, I think, except for the basement, which is where I lived and we only had one. So I normally would just call my RA and be like, hey, can you help me? Yep. Can you let me in? Um, so I would like to say, don't panic if you're like, well, what if I get locked out in the bathroom? Do I have to cross the street in broad daylight to get <laughs> let back in? There are like other ways, but mostly um, for lockouts and things like that. In the event that you aren't like, you know, in the bathroom, you can go across the court. And Miss Christie is there. She's always, she's amazing. She's willing to help. Yeah. And it's nice because, you know, your RA for your specific floor isn't always going to be around. They're not always going to be there to help you. I mean, they're not full-time, you know, living Enjoy. professionals. Exactly. Um, so we have an RA on duty. And so if you end up locking yourself out, can't get a hold of your RA or whatever, honestly, your best bet is going to be just calling the RA on duty number um, because they'll have it and they'll be able to let you in. So we're going to move over this way. Um, and like I mentioned before, this is still a part of the space where anybody can walk into during business hours. You don't need to fob into this area. If you look over here, 
There are some, honestly, very pretty mailboxes. They're just for show. Don't try and open them when you're getting your mail. There are nowhere near enough mailboxes for the amount of residents that are in this building. I think this would also be a good time to mention that your mailing address is different than your mm -hmm. um, living address because we get mail picked up at the court. And so the mailing address for Holcomb residents is 1106 West Maple Street. Yep. That is my memory. Yeah, yeah I'm so impressed. <laughs> Um, you'll also be able to see that on your housing portal as well, same place where you can check like your meal plan and all that good stuff. Um, this right here is Shemsa's office, as she mentioned before. So when RAs come, you will see it full of door decks with her name on it and all of that good stuff. Um, we do have an elevator in Holcomb, which is super convenient, especially for moving. You're going to be moving in in August. It's going to be hot. This will make it so you don't have to climb so many flights of stairs. Sorry to our future folks because there is not an elevator in there. It is also fogged. So yes. even though everybody has access to the elevator, you cannot get to residence floors without like access, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So again, make sure you always have your fob on you, otherwise you'll get locked out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the elevator is right here to my left, um, pretty close to the front desk. We have a staircase right here that takes us up to um, the second and third floors, also down to the basement. And then right behind me is where you can see the ISS office. Um, they, it's, it's dark right now because they have stuff <laughs> going be on. Yep. But for those who don't know, the ISS office is our Office of International Students and Scholars. And so they have a ton of events that they do. They do orientations for international students. I mean, honestly, the list just goes on and on for everything that they do. Um, we could have a whole UARC life just for their office, but everyone is super nice. Yes. So even if you're not an international student, don't be scared to go in and they just be like, yeah, and be like, what's <laughs> up? Like, what, what are you doing? They'll also have events in the living room, which is super fun. Um, it's one of the great, yeah, with food, it's one of the great things about our community because we just have a lot of different people with lived experiences um, that participate in stuff here, which is nice. And I will also point out that the university has a food pantry where you can fill out a form online um, if you're ever in need of groceries that you just can't afford to get for yourself at the moment. And Holcomb just happens to be one of the express stops. So what you do, you just fill out a form online, giving them like a general idea of the things that you need. And on whichever day comes first, Tuesday or Friday, um, you will find a bag of food here with your name on it if you're ever in need. Yeah. It's a nice service to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool. So the VAC does that and we also have a small, I say small, yes. small, like a small uh, food pantry yeah. behind the building as mm -hmm. well. It's outside and that's just, Kind of a grab and go type of thing and so if you ever are looking they're usually all um what's the word non-perishables yeah can type things so you can stop by there and see what they've got um or, or you if can you stop ever, i was just gonna say that yeah if you ever like you know i bought six boxes of pasta go why <laughs> why do i have six you can, you're welcome to put one in there too which is nice yeah. we want you to be able to focus on your academics and not yes. Yes. that grumbles in your stomach yeah. actually we're going uh, downstairs first yes, yes. So we'll head downstairs, that way you can see um, the spaces that are available there. So even though I can walk backwards down the hallway and doing it down the stairs, it's not a skill <laughs> that I have. We can also point out that the doors, there are doors that give you access from behind Holcomb that are also fogged. So if you if you are coming from the back entrance or the front, the front door is not the only place that you are allowed to yeah. enter. So we'll go over this way first and show y'all where the laundry room is. Um, something that's nice about all of the residence halls on campus is that laundry is free for you to use. Um, we also have an ice machine down here. You can find recycling down here as well. Um, we try to maintain a sustainable living area, so recycling is super important to us. The vending machine is usually filled. Yes, right now the vending <laughs> machines are empty because there's been nobody here. Um, but the one on the left will have snacks, the one on the right will have drinks, and that's available for you as well to pay with cash. Um, also, like that with the laundry, so I feel like a lot of students don't understand how this is used. 
but I typically love the laundry app. So basically, um, you look at the number on the washer or dryer that you're using, and the app will tell you how much time is left on it. And so I know a big thing in college is if you leave your laundry in the dryer or wash it too long, somebody will come and take it out because they need to use it. So that way I could have always like alert, let it alert me when my dryer was done or I could just look and see, oh, my dryer has like three more minutes so I should probably head down there. It just helped me keep better track of like what was going on with my laundry. Yeah, and something I will say too is that it's, it happens every year somebody just completely forgets that they are doing laundry <laughs> and so they leave it here for like days um, we have our ISAs who are our custodial staff collect that they bag it say when they collected it and it actually comes to me and so I hold on to it for a week so if your laundry goes missing don't talk panic. to your RA talk to me yeah don't panic um, because likely you forgot it we collected it but if you don't come and pick it up for two weeks then we end up donating it because the thought is that if you're if you're not missing it after two weeks you're not you going to and we're not just gonna store it forever in the hall um, but we will go over this way so the basement is unique compared to the second and third floors because there are only resident rooms in a portion of the basement. Mm -hmm. um, a large area of the basement is actually reserved for another common area. Um, it's also where we have the kitchen that you will see. Mm -hmm. um, something we're going to point out is that right here, that dark room <laughs> at the end, <laughs> um, that is the trash room. And so for the other floors, which we'll point out when we get up there, um, there's a trash chute, so you can just send your trash down that. But for residents living in the basement, just walk it over there. Um, that'll be a little bit easier for you. Yeah, I don't know how you do walking that way. I know. You know, I knew that the stairs were coming up, so I was a little nervous. <laughs> now for my favorite room <laughs> yes. in all of Holcomb. So we have this um, pretty large communal area, which is nice. It has a pool table, ping pong a bunch of seating and then we have a tv over here um, that y'all are welcome to use you can also connect your laptop to it with an hdmi so if you have something on your laptop that you want to watch totally up to you but you will always find people here yes of all hours of all days <laughs> i have about 75 percent of my memories are like smash tournaments at like 3 a.m <laughs> in this basement <laughs> We it's, love it's, what, What's a Smash tournament? Um, the Switch game, um, Nintendo game Smash, Smash Bros. Yep. We would all like just have tournaments. Like once you lost, you were out, and the next person came, and then who was the winner at the end? Just was like the That's basement yep. king. Yeah. Like, do you do you oh. choose a specific Smash Bro? Yeah. No. So you, there's like a bunch of Nintendo like characters, characters that okay. you choose from. My favorite was Lucario, obviously. Um, he's amazing. I will also tell y'all, I remember like it was, it's a group of like 16 of us. We were always together and always in the basement. And we called this the king chair. And it was whoever got to the basement first in the evenings got to like claim the king chair. But then you would be scared to move because the minute that you moved, Someone else take would, it. would claim the king chair. Is it, isn't king chair also known as a throne? Yes. <laughs> well, but the king chair seems I know, fancier we, we to me. I just to call it the king chair. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But it's great because everybody, you know, makes their own memories in the basement. It has different reasons of why they really like it. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but we have our kitchen down here. And this is one of my favorite parts of the basement <laughs> is the kitchen. So in here... Um, we have a full refrigerator, we have a stove, oven, microwave, all of that good stuff. Um, actually, something that I forgot to mention when we were upstairs is that if you ever need to reserve like cooking utensils um, or supplies, you can go to the front desk and ask for those. So we have, and let me specify, we have a lot of the basics, right? Yes. So like <laughs> mixing bowls, cooking sheets, pots and pans, that kind of thing. Um, but it's on a first come, first serve basis, so if somebody's already checked it out, but you're just gonna have to wait until they're done. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're somebody who likes to cook a lot, you know, you like to cook your own meals, I recommend, you know, consider bringing some of your own stuff. Sure. Um, exactly, and also if you have like specific things that you like to use, we're not gonna have those, so consider bringing your own. 
Um, but it's nice too because it has this little pass through right here, and so there will be people in here cooking and their friends yeah. waiting. For waiting for the food to be done. Yep. Often, that was the part I was a part of. Yeah. The waiting to eat. They're like, I am ready. <laughs> and it's so nice because, you know, I would always walk by and you can just smell it. Mm -hmm. Like the food always smells so, so good. good. So I would, I could be like up in one of the sterols be like, okay, someone's cooking. I'm going to go figure out where it is. <laughs> like, it's super fun. Um, oftentimes when we have our global series events too, like before the event, because they, whoever the presenter is shares a traditional dish from their home. Um, they'll cook some of the food down here too, which is really nice. So we will head back upstairs. Um, there are water bottle filler stations. Gosh, that was hard for me to say. <laughs> on every floor, um, some of them have like the like the standy uppy kind. I that was the least technical term in the world. <laughs> but where you can just uh, yeah. Yep, that's it, the bottle filler. <laughs> the bottle filler. Standy up kind. Standy up kind. You know, I <laughs> stand by that. that. I think that's what it should be called. Um, others are just drinking fountains. It just kind of depends on where you're at, but they're located um, all throughout the building, which is nice. So something that I wanted to say is as we're going up this staircase, you will see a parking lot right here. Don't park there. <laughs> Do not. If you, this is a staff lot, and if you park in this lot, they might be nice and give you a warning the first time. Or you can get booted. <laughs> yep, or they'll ticket you, especially if it's a game day. This turns into tailgating spaces. Mm -hmm. That's a hefty ticket. Sometimes they'll tell you. Just avoid this lot. Just don't, don't, don't do it. Don't There's a resident reserve lot on the other side of the building. This is the and east also, side of the building, I think. Yes. And that's the north side of the building. Sure. Right? And we're also yes. next door to a park in your garage. So just, just save yourself yes. the headache. I had a friend who got booted, and it's a bummer. It was unfortunate for her. It was hilarious for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of parking options, just not that bad. <laughs> Forbidden fruit. Uh, yeah, parking right. options. Yeah. And it's such a good space that you're always tempted to just park there. What are you? Uh, what are you studying? I am studying chemical engineering. Oh, okay. Which is my unbiased opinion, the best kind of engineering. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going, now we're on the second floor. Um, in Holcomb, the second floor is our male floor. <coughs> the third floor is female and the basement is female as well. Um, we have a community style building which means that you share a bathroom with the other residents on your floor. So we have showers over here. Emily's going to show you what these showers typically look like. <laughs> so you have a separate changing area and showering area. There are shelves where you can put your stuff Do you like on. me to turn it on? <laughs> no. <laughs> Full scent. Fully clothed all of it. <laughs> Then we have all of these sinks over here, and there's a lot of counter space. The mirror space yep. is beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> so this is what all of the bathrooms look like on the floors. Um, there's one on this side, and there's going to be one on the other side as well for the second and third floors. Like I mentioned earlier, the basement is different. There are not as many residents on there, so there's just one bathroom for everybody down there. But the basement also does have two individual bathrooms on yes. the other side and instead of a community bathroom. Mm -hmm. I think there's one male and one female. Yep. And it's also handicap accessible on that side. Yes. And something to note as well is since this is the male floor, if any of the guys have female guests that come to hang out, um, they're welcome to do so, but they can't use these bathrooms because they are community style. So we have those two separate bathrooms down in the basement and then also on the first floor in that lobby area. There are three um, all gender restrooms as well that guests can use. So, yeah, here's a, here's a here's a water fountain that doesn't have the standy up each day. Right now, we're going to show you what a typical double room. What room looks are we like. in? Two oh nine. Two oh nine. So whoever's in two oh nine. Some lucky person yeah. is living here, and they're like, "This is my dream." I know. Like, how could you be surprised how often that happens? That's too funny. So. 
What's nice is that every piece of furniture in this room is movable, yes. so you can customize it, make it what you want. The only things that are not are the closets. Um, so in the closets, you can hang stuff up. Something to know is that there's a mirror. Yes, every single <laughs> closet in the resident rooms has a full length mirror. So if you're going to be living in Holcomb, don't bring a full length <laughs> mirror because there's going to be two if you you know are in a double you have a roommate if you're in a single well there's just gonna be the one be yours um but yeah it has a mirror so don't show up with one because you won't need it now if you want multiple that's not that's your thing um <laughs> but there are also mirrors. over here on this side there's some shelving as well mm -hmm. um that you can use yeah. i typically use the shelving for my shoes yeah and kept like the hanging space so i'm just like shoes like shirts and then i put my pants on top to kind of like yeah give the aesthetic that my life is together <laughs> and i'm ready for college like my closet is probably the most organized thing about my life <laughs> it has so i get it yeah i totally get it um but you also will each have your own um dresser as well uh the beds are twin xls which means that the mattress is 80 inches long yes. um we also, each resident in the rooms has a small nightstand mm -hmm. that has a drawer that locks. So if you have some things um, that you don't want your roommate to have access to, you can put them in here. I would have, yeah, I definitely had one. Um, I would advise getting a code lock versus a keyed lock because there was a point in time um, in the semester where I lost like the key to my lock and that was a whole thing but then i got like a pin one where i just had to remember the pin and i just wrote it down someplace safe um because i know a lot of people they're like oh well i already have a pod lock so they just bring one but then if you lose the key then your drawer is closed forever yeah. so i they're like three or four dollars at walmart they do sell them at the walmart on campus as well so it's pretty easy to get one yeah, and um, one other thing that I wanted to mention, sorry, I keep bringing y'all in circles. <laughs> um, you can use this storage up here. As if you're tall enough. I'm 5'6 I'm and a half, and I, there's no way I can reach that. Yeah, it's just nothing. <laughs> oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes residents will use that to just like put suitcases up there and things up to you. You can also hang your outfit for the next day <laughs> off of it, which is what I often did. Act like you have your life together. Yes. If you act fun. like it, it's true. Yes. <laughs> fun, um, fun, fun. One last thing, the back of all the doors have uh, towel wraps on them as well, so you can um, have that available. And the information as well. Yeah. Do we have any questions about the room? No, but guys, feel free to ask any questions you guys have about dimensions or anything in the room. No, this is usually the part of the tour where you get the most questions. So I've oh. been like psyching myself up for it. For sure. <laughs> Why don't we do an interior on the drawers? Because that's often okay. the questions that gets asked. And okay. people who watch the show even after can know that. Ooh. I'm ready. Yes. Okay. So the interior of our drawers are 26 inches. And then do you mind getting both dimensions? So, yes. um, width, I guess, and length, depth. The questions are coming in now. Oh, okay. heck yes. So, 20 by 26. There we go. Uh, Raina asks, can we get the measurements of the window? Someone's putting up curtains, aren't you? Yep. I was going to say, you are welcome. You are welcome to bring curtains um, to hang up. Oops, Just sorry. know that you can't put any I holes. Put <laughs> you can't put any holes in the walls. Um, so make sure that you're using command hooks and things like that to hang things up. Forty-seven inches. And then what about Do the up and down? From yeah. The floor. Uh, uh, from the lid, probably. Yeah. I think they're looking for a tension rod. You go, uh, let me see if I can pull this away slightly. I think that's just five. 78 inches. Okay, not to the ceiling oh. then, but to the inside. Let's see. I think they want to put a tension rod up there. 65 inches. There's not a lot of room there to put a tension rod. No. Yeah. Um, Janine asks, what's the highest loftable height of the bed? Off hand, we don't have that number unless you just happen to know it. 
But if you go to movein.uark.edu, the move-in website, then go to the page that's ready to arrive, mm -hmm. you'll see lofting information. And in that area, you will find the maximum and the minimum. And then you can know that it goes three inches. You can, you can, mac you can go every three inches with that. Yeah, yes. and something just for a visual, sorry we don't have that specific number mm -hmm. for you, um, but you can, if you want to loft your bed higher than this, that's totally an option. Um, you'll want to put in a work order for that and they bring another set of these and stabilize them and so it can go like up, up to here. Mm -hmm. So you can fit, um, you can reasonably fit your desk underneath, you know, all, some people will bring futons. I'll see people put a yeah. comic a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they're, I mean, it, it goes up pretty high as long as you're comfortable climbing the rails. <laughs> and that work order process is going to the website housing mm -hmm. forward slash fix it, F I X I T, fix it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and there, our maintenance guy, Jeff, That's is amazing. just, oh my gosh, a yeah. gem of a human being. <laughs> If you ever see him, he, you'll hear him before you see him. You see, the man has so many keys <laughs> on his belt loop, you hear him a mile away. But if you ever run into him, definitely, definitely say hi. I mean, he is so kind and he is always excited to make sure that y'all are comfortable in your rooms, that everything's working the way that it should be. Um, he does a great job with it. And so if you place that work order um, at housing.uark.edu slash fix it, he will be the one coming in to help out with it. Um, just know at the beginning of the year, everybody unplugs it. Yes, everybody is putting in work orders, so it will probably take him a little bit to get to yours. Um, during the no normal portions of the year, yeah, the turnaround is much quicker. But since you know we have hundreds of students moving in at the same time, because he's the maintenance man for Holcomb and Futural, um, he's got a lot going on. So just just have some patience, have some grace with him. But it's definitely an option for you to loft it. I would also say like a trick for me as a student because I know a lot of times we give like oh go to uark.edu forward slash backward slash this this that. I normally just put like uark and then whatever I'm looking for. 10 out of 10 times the first link will give you what you need. So yeah. like anytime I can't remember how to get to the maintenance request. I just put UARC maintenance request mm -hmm. and like it's literally most of the time the first link. Yep. So that's the trick. I just put UARC before a word and that's how I find Your things. Google powers are strong. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, Google is your best friend. Like I said before, this is going to be my third year in this community and I still Google things because <laughs> there are just so many websites where you can find info. Um, Emily, is there another question? Yeah. Someone asked, does the closet lock? Yes. yes. So you can see um, it's actually a deadbolt that it locks with. Well, it's right here. Mm -hmm. um, but the key, you have a specific key for it. So you can lock your things in there as well. How big are the locked drawers? Oh. Yes, this is a joke for me. <laughs> <laughs> you got the measuring skills. I do. Okay, so we got 20 long and 14 across. And someone asked, what are the size of the shelves in the closet? Well, why don't we find out? <laughs> so it's nine deep and 27 across. They're also on a slant, which is why I normally use them for shoes. So just be aware of that, because if something's too heavy and you put it at the top, it may just like slide, slide off. <laughs> uh, Janine asked, what's the height of the dresser? Will it fit the dresser underneath? Yes. If you put the bed to the highest loft currently, or maybe even the second one, Yes, your yeah, dressers can fit under the bed. Mm -hmm. Can confirm. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. measure what the actual height is? Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, like she said, if you locked it all the way to the top on this like bed frame, it'll fit underneath. You don't need to request that second one up above. That is 30 inches. Yeah. So 30 inches tall. And with what's nice about these bed frames is that 
it's easy for you to move them, like move the height yourself. Mm -hmm. The only time you really need to put in that Absolutely. work order is if you want it to go higher than this. They um, pretty much just, it's just a hook. So yeah. if it's not, if it's hard to just pull it off, what I normally do is flip it upside down and kick it down <laughs> because that way gravity helps you. Some <laughs> people put it in so like, they're like, I don't want yep. this to move for the next six years. Well, and something that I recommend too is have your roommate help you or have a friend help you. Um, that makes it far easier so that hopefully you won't have to get it. We also have like rubber mallets and stuff that yes. you can check out from the front desk that'll make it easier for you, but you literally just have to lift this up and it'll unhook it and then you can just adjust it from there. Uh, someone asked, what's the rule on using pins and tacks to hang things? So if you have a cork board, you can use pins and tacks, whatever you want, but every don't make holes in the walls. Yeah. That is kind of the baseline yeah. rule. Painter's um, tape is because, your best for it. Yes, like blue tape, painter's tape is great. Command hooks, command strips, fantastic. Um, what we do before everybody shows up is we do an evaluation of the room. What state is it in? Are there holes in the walls already? Um, so we take note of all of that for every single room in the halls. And then when the student moves out, they go back through and say, okay, is there anything that's different? So if you put, you know, holes in the walls with nails or push pins or thumbtacks, um, that's going to be noted and you can be charged for it. Mm -hmm. So just avoid, avoid the hassle, avoid the bummer of needing to, <laughs> to pay the maintenance fee and just yeah. use command hooks. Um, and someone asked, are the RA rooms identical? No. no. RAs, um, they have single rooms and so it's big enough for one set of furniture to fit into it. Their closet is a little bit larger and they actually get their own bathrooms. And so if it is an RA that is asking this question, you have my phone number, text me, and I can walk through it with you at a different time. <laughs> <laughs> and one more question until we're caught up. Would you recommend a mattress topper for these types of beds? Yes. yes. <laughs> 100, 100. Now, I will say, honestly, it's not like death defying to your back, but <laughs> I would say like in college, you're going to be up some hours just like studying um if you work while you're at school things like that like i do you want to come home and lay upon a cloud <laughs> of comfort and like a hug and a foam mattress top of yep. is like top tail i will say though hack i just bought like two comforters and put one under me and one on top of me and that was perfect there you go yeah and i will say like the beds, they're not uncomfortable. No. They're, they're just, actually pretty cushiony. Yeah, they're just not going to be as comfortable as probably the bed that you have at home. Yep. So having the, the foam topper is nice, and a lot of residents get them. Yep. So, And if you buy, because like I said before, these are twin XL beds. If you buy twin XL sheets, it'll still fit with a mattress topper on it as well. Yep. And if you're anything like me and you prefer soft beds, I invested in a two and a half inch mm. um, mattress topper Gigi and mm -hmm. it was like I was sleeping <laughs> on a cloud. So yep. I think usually the go-to for residents is anywhere from one to two inch mattress toppers. Mm -hmm. Emily's a little, a little <laughs> bit more delicate and needed that extra half an inch, but yeah. But those are all the questions we have. Okay. Well, should, do you have any uh, thoughts for our incoming uh, first year students? Mm -hmm. And you've been here a while. You. Got some, any hacks for us? I would say, well, first of all, I would say congrats for being accepted because this was definitely like, I was telling them um, earlier, like this was one of the greatest choices I feel when I decided to come here as a university. It wasn't, I didn't have much expectations, but like it was, I got so much more out of the U of A. Like I got community, I got friends, literally, the friends that I met at Holcomb, we just went for lunch like before this. So like I made friends for life living in this dorm. And like like you guys can see, when I go into the basement, like those memories still like hug me and like remind me of like my freshman year of college. I would just say a hack, don't stay in your room. Um, I like wasted the first month of university um, in my room. I'm, I'm a sleeper, so I used every opportunity to take a nap. And now I'm the person that like does live tours and I'm like, oh, I have an hour free. What can I do? How can I go outside? How can I like be a part of something? 
So don't be afraid to just jump into something, find out if you like it, find out if you don't. It's okay to not like something, but it's not okay not to try. That's that's what I was wow, thinking. that was beautiful. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, That's inspiring. We've got a couple more questions yeah. now. Um, how many electrical outlets are in the room? Oh gosh, Ooh. I would say good five. question. There's one on each side. There's one here. Yeah. Three. There's typically eight to ten, but I'm not okay. sure about this room. There's one here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I think there's two on each side, so four. In my, if I remember correctly, so one on these two. walls. There's two, two, and then on these, there's going to be three. And then there's one on those sides. Yeah. Okay. So three, seven. five, six, seven, eight. No. Two, three, three five, two, seven. seven. Good one. <laughs> Math was not my degree. I was not a chemical engineering major. <laughs> and someone else asked, do the rooms in the basement look just like these? Yes. yes. I actually lived in the basement. I'm going to tell you our rooms are better just because... It's the basement, and we have a really big room to hang out in. So live in the basement. <laughs> a really big room. She means that community area. <laughs> yeah, it's a really big room. The actual rooms, rooms the that same. residents stay in are going to be the exact same. They all look the same here. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention, too, is I know coming to college can be really stressful, especially if you've never moved away from home before. We do a ton of events in our community, so that way you can meet other people in the residence hall that you live in, but also, like I said before, we are a community with Futural, and so that we can meet residents from the other building too. Um, we have global series here, we have, you know, your, there's gonna be floor programs that your RA puts on for your floor specifically, but we also have all hall events, and all hall events are events where anybody Everyone. in that community is welcome and can go to it. And those are typically actually in Futural Hall. That way you all can become comfortable going between the two buildings and getting to know everybody. And so if you're curious about where those are, what Futural looks like, definitely check out um, the UARC Live that we did for Futural. We did that last week, so it should already be up on the website. Yep, <laughs> up on the website. So you can see it there and see, you know, that lots of that food, did. lots of yep. prizes. Those are the things that got me to go anywhere my yep. freshman year, <laughs> free food and prizes. The university is like top tier at like event prizes. <laughs> you guys are really good at event Which, prizes. Honestly, I'm a full-time professional and I'm still motivated by food and prizes, so I don't think that ever changes. Um, but we also, you know, it's easy to do things in your community. It can be harder to get out of the building and off campus. Um, but your RAs are here to help with that. Mm -hmm. And so especially, you know, you're moving in about 10 days-ish before classes actually start. There's gonna be a ton of events going on. Your RAs are constantly gonna be like, hey, there's this thing that's happening that's across great. campus. I'm going, come with me, you know, like, like I said, like Always take advantage. Always with your RAs. Yes. My Holcomb RA honestly just graduated last semester and literally after I moved off campus, we still would hang out Mm -hmm. And like I miss her so much. She yeah. like made the difference of like my first. She was the one that realized I was always in my room taking naps and was like, "You're coming with me <laughs> to this event." And yeah. look at me now, I'm just in yeah. all the events. So it's so fun. And I will say, I think too, before you come to college, the only real experience you have is what you see on TV, it's and the RAs it's and the series or hall directors are portrayed as being scary as being mean, as like, they're out to get you. Not We're not like that, I promise. <laughs> like, we want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel like you belong here because, I mean, you do, right? Um, and so they're here to be your friends. Like, yes, we have policies that we need to uphold for housing and we're going to, because that's our job, it's to keep you safe. Um, we aren't wardens. No, exactly. We're not, we're not wardens, you know, we're, we're here to have a good time just like you all are, so. Don't don't be afraid to hang out with them. Or if they put in the group me like, hey, I'm gonna go to dinner. Who wants to come? Please like, go. please go. <laughs> Have a good time please because go. they're gonna know a lot about campus. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it's about events or buildings, classes, classes buying books, exactly like academics, study tips, like all of this. Like they've lived it, they've gone through it, just like you're going to be doing. So they're gonna be a really good resource for you. And we have one last question. Uh, someone asked if we are going to be seeing a single room. Could we describe, um, is, it gonna be, is it much different than this? 
It's not much different. Basically, the difference is it's going to cut off about right and here. And it'll have one set of this furniture. Way. Yep, so it's a little bit smaller than these rooms, just has one set of furniture, just has one closet in it. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, though, it's the exact same. And Lachey, your mom said, if there are moms on, as a mom, I felt extremely comfortable leaving Lachey at Holcomb Hall. You can be assured that your young adult is in a great environment. Yes, she did. My mom came with me, um, and I remember when um, my housing portal opened and said, well, you're living in Holcomb, and I went to pick up my keys, and actually, she was so excited. She was like, I'm going to help her decorate. But then my OCD kicked in, and I was like, I've got to get out. <laughs> I was like, I've got this. But yeah, um, she loved it. I loved it. And clearly, I'm still here. So we still, she is here on live. So we still love it. That's awesome. Well, do you want to tell us about um, the initiative that the Student Affairs is doing? Yes. So we actually have something, when I say we, I mean the Division of Student Affairs has something called Pick One. Um, so I definitely recommend taking advantage of this. The idea behind it is that a bunch of offices and departments across campus have um, either an event or organization that you can be a part of. And so the goal is before you come to campus, you've picked one thing that you want to learn more about, that you want to get involved in. That way you can start kind of your University of Arkansas story before you even step foot on campus. Um, It'll honestly, it'll help you feel more comfortable because you're like, all right, here's at least one thing that I know what this is. Mm -hmm. I know that there are other people who are doing it too, um, which can make the entire process a little bit easier. Yeah, and I think that's about it. So if there are no other questions, I mean, thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. Really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, I mean, feel free to call the housing office and they'll they'll put you in touch with the right people. Yeah, but and if you want to see more dorms and more tours, just Check us on live tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.